Welcome back to Plot to Infuse. I'm Brie, and today we finally discuss how my head is exactly shaped like my logo. I think that's who's. <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome back to Plot to Infuse. I'm Brie, and on here I talk about books, movies, TV shows, and occasionally share spoilers for books you're curious about but may never read. I hope you read them, the ones that you find interesting, but if you don't, I do provide spoilers for those persons who like spoilers. I usually give a heads up before I do that, so you don't have to run away too soon. Keep in mind that all opinions on this channel are my own, and they're exactly that, opinions. It's not to insult anyone or anyone's work. These are just my perceptions and feelings about the books I would have read and the things I would have watched. So today we are talking sci-fi, finally. And I say finally because this has been a video I have wanted to do. For a while now and i just couldn't think about how i was going to do it so i decided to do an intro video on sci-fi my ideas behind sci-fi how i see sci-fi what i consider sci-fi and then because i'm currently reading some great sci-fi books i want to then review those after this one so this one could be sort of like the background as to why i'd be making certain comments about certain books and why it is that I may think uh, certain elements are interesting or lacking, etc. So we'll discuss how sci-fi is defined traditionally. We'll also go into some of the classifications that other persons would have given different sci-fi novels. And then I want to go into some of the elements uh, that I find very interesting about sci-fi uh, and the format that is interesting in sci-fi because it does exist and they do exist in other books but in sci-fi it's just a little different so there should be about six of those and then there's a special request for sci-fi authors because this is important so straddle up and prepare for some strange new worlds you're welcome star trek <laughs> prepare for some strange new worlds and let's dive in. like all scientists we're going to start off with some definitions so that we can set the stage and understand each other. On this channel, sci-fi is fiction. Sci-fi is fiction that features advanced applications of scientific knowledge to life, so technology, intrinsic to the story and therefore cannot be removed without the story falling apart. This is what this channel is going to consider science fiction okay so because we're looking at scientific applications and we're looking at their applications to life we are going to have the science subjects so hard and soft sciences and these will impact the different types of science fiction books and science fiction novels that we have resulted If the story falls apart because you've removed the futuristic, imaginative concept in the book, then I don't consider it sci-fi. That's basically what I mean. Traditionally, sci-fi is classified as hard and soft science fiction, where hard sci-fi is based upon projection of solid scientific principles and scientific knowledge. And soft sci-fi would just have a few departures from what would be considered traditional hard science everything else would fall into fantasy sci-fi or science fiction fantasy others have also classified science fiction based on what is causing the effect or being affected for example under physical earth we have dystopias utopias and far futures under humanity we have mutants clones and post humans under time there's time travel parallel universes and steampunk under space, there's interplanetary travel and interstellar travel, as well as space colonies. Interstellar travel, as well as space colonies. Under created beings, we have robots, androids, and uplifted animals, so modified animals. And under aliens, we have invasions, first contact, alien tech, etc. But as my focus is scientific applications regardless, I classify my science fiction books and novels differently. Please don't mock my classification, okay, because it's not that different, but it, it, it allows me to streamline my idea 
of what I'm reading. I classify my science fiction reads and videos into three different categories. So soft sci-fi, high sci-fi, and hard sci-fi. Soft sci-fi would be improbable science or technology in an otherwise possible world. So the science is a little iffy. There are some things that are coming in that you're like, mm. but the world seems possible, soft sci-fi to me. Some examples here are Noor, Remote Control, Dogs of Deftown, Revenge, and Ubik. And yes, Ubik, because that science towards the end that you see seems a bit improbable. Like, it gives me improbable. So I'm going to go with soft sci-fi for you. High sci-fi would be improbable science in an improbable or impossible world. Star Trek, Star Wars, Foundry Side, uh, the Foundry Side series, the Desert Mag Magician duology that I'm currently reading by Nnedi Okorafor, The Unraveling, and Binti. All of these to me are high sci-fi. High sci-fi just has some sprinkles of like almost magic kind of things that aren't fully explained, as well as like worlds with random plants popping into our world and then the plants turning into people eating plants. That kind of thing to me gives me high sci-fi vibe. Yeah, high sci-fi. And finally, we have hard science fiction. So we have possible science or technology in a possible world. Very straightforward. Here we have the three body problem series, the murder bot series, and the all-consuming world. Although the all-consuming world is like extremely far future, I believe, I do see how it could be possible. It makes sense. I love how delusional science fiction is although it pretends not to be delusional let's be honest you have the creation of bizarre worlds bizarre people bizarre things and these are based on our perceptions of what we currently understand or we wish would happen and then we come up with a story and that's science fiction because we're like oh it's science it's based on the science that we know it's also based on your delusions okay Sci-fi is delusional. The six main reasons I love sci-fi. Here are the six main reasons I absolutely adore science fiction in comparison to fantasy and some other genres. One, world building and rank imagination. I love how reliant on other people science fiction is because these stories are coming out of a body of knowledge, a body of knowledge by scientists, by persons who have had experiences or delusions, by um, perceptions. So it's a bunch of ideas that have come together, that have formed how we perceive a particular thing, and poof, someone takes all of that and makes a story. Fantasy, on the other hand, is just like, you could sit down in your corner by yourself, look out your window, and just imagine that there's a group of balloon people that have come to invade your planet and or balloon modified people that are now bringing magic magic balloon elves you don't necessarily need someone to come up with that idea you could just you could just come up with it yourself so science fiction is more reliant on other persons than fantasy mm -hmm. yep the two mostly gray and conflicted characters who are not pagli this is very important to me the not pagli so pagli means it's like a combination of like stupid foolish terrible decisions and then you exist in this nonsense ball that's being pagli science fiction does not have pagli people especially pagli women they may be useless but are they pagli no three i love confusion i love being plopped into a story where there's just action taking place and the author doesn't feel the need to hold my hand and take me through it. And while this does happen in some fantasy books, I find that in science fiction, it happens more. And I love that. Put me down into confusion and then just bring me through it, please. Or you could just leave me sort of hanging there. I'm perfectly fine. Four, how insurmountable some of the conflicts seem to be. Unlike fantasy where there's magic that can usually fix the problem or a random being that I create could just come and magically solve the problem. In science fiction, the problems just seem so overwhelming and they usually are so overwhelming that even when you have a good resolution, you're never truly satisfied because you know 
that if this were true, it would not be that simple. Five, the side mysteries. In science fiction, you may have like a main problem, a main something going on, but there's always so much more happening that you have to try and find your way into what's happening. For example, I'm currently reading Traitor's Run by Keith Stevenson. I have to go find his name. <laughs> anyway, so in his story so far, we have about three different worlds and peoples and each one of them, they look different and there is a set of action going on around each one of them. So one of them, someone died and they should be in jail. We don't know why. Another one of them, it's like this creature trying to run away from home. We don't know why. And I love that. I love that about science fiction. It's just like so much going on. It's fun. Finally, finally, I adore the fact that I'm never going to see any of these things. Could you imagine? Could you imagine living in a world where there are giant cockroaches that are coming after you? They're like giant mice robots coming. No, no. I love how, I love the fact that they're time bound and not in my world. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's like great story. Thank you. I do not want this for myself. Usually with fantasy though, I feel like I do want it. Like I do want to have magical powers. I do want to have like a little, I don't know, unicorn horn. I don't know. But with science fiction, I don't believe I've ever been like, oh yes, let me live through all of the problems that this book is highlighting. No, no, thank you. Keep that on your pages. Keep it on your pages. Thank you. And in honor of Lutera Holly on threads slash breads slash books, books, book threads and bookishly by, we would like to formally request that science fiction authors give us better book covers. Thank you. We, we want to collect your books. So please make your books pretty and collectible. This is serious, actually. We know that there's this thing that you guys like to do, but consider a book that is beautiful just in of itself. Your books also deserve to be collected randomly. You're welcome. And that's my initial contribution to the science fiction discourse. I'd love to hear in the comments how you feel about science fiction, what you like, what you don't like, maybe what you despise about the genre, if you usually stay away from sci-fi and why. And I'd probably tell you, try it out. Go look, like, ask for Rex. They're, they're good. As I said before, my next few videos will be reviews on science fiction books that I'm currently reading, that I'm in love with, in love love in love with we have the desert magician duology by nina di uh we have traitors run by keith stevenson i have so you survive the end of the world the books two and three that i need to read we of course have oh my gosh because i'm so excited about it we have the latest book in the murder bot series that is system collapse there are just so many of them like at this point i don't care about the titles i just want to read the story okay systems collapse by martha wells and city of bones i need to see if city of bones is a fantasy like a fantasy a, if i would consider it as high fan high sci-fi what it is exactly i'm not really sure so i'm not really going to call it into the science fiction thing let's see what happens but yeah those are the books that are coming up <laughs> yay on that note, thank you so much for sitting down with me here today. Remember to subscribe and comment. Let me hear how you feel about these books, if you've read them, uh, if you're looking forward to read them, if you have them on your TBR, or if you absolutely hate science fiction and you will never touch a book, a science fiction book in your life, which you shouldn't, you shouldn't say that. You should change your, you should change your heart. You should change your heart. Have an amazing week. Otherwise, take care. Bye-bye.